What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to our last episode of Europa Universalis 4. Our Russian Empire is fairly complete. Uh, one of my biggest issues right now is mainly just dealing with rebels, mainly just dealing with a variety of of uh, different, not religions, but basically different cultures. And what I would love to do is start making all of these cultures like Muscovite, but that would take so much dif uh, diplomatic power that I really just don't think it's worth it. So other than that, I think what we're going to do is obviously try to build up a lot, of mo a lot more workshops to improve the production. And then we're also going to get a lot more coin. I think I'm just going to build up as many workshops as I can, all the way down to like 0.07, which I guess is uh, almost done. All of these workshops used to be around 86 coin, but because of our inflation that did go up, we can now create an army, protect against Ming. What if 75% of our force limit or 472 units? Let's create an army for our nation. I'm pretty sure that this episode isn't going to, uh, you know, have enough time to create an army. But I would really love to declare war on Chagatai. They are still a tributary state of Ming, so don't get me wrong. Uh, Kemer and Chagatai are obviously helping out Ming, which is not good. Merchants are leaving, losing some domestic trade power. And I guess we can finally go along and unlock the field howitzer, unlock the gold standard, and then ultimately we are pretty much done with our diplomatic technology and our military technology, so there's nothing much for us to do. It would be amazing if we actually declared war on Cilicia and basically removed them from the game, but, uh, you know, the only thing that I'm upset about is this 16 development province. I would easily be able to annihilate them before anybody really responded, uh, which would happen in, like, Hearts of Iron 4 or, like, World War II. But in this game, basically what would happen is uh, I would be in a war with Scotland, which I don't care, Saxony, which I do care, and Austria. Now, Austria is, is the emperor, so they would bring in all of their allies... And uh, it would be a little bit of a bloodbath. All for one tiny province, so I don't think it's really uh, necessary. But in the meantime, we are making roughly 127 coin every single turn. Once I deal with these rebels, I will probably go ahead and uh, r uh, reduce our army maintenance and uh, our fleet maintenance by a substantial number. I do have a lot of galleys that aren't necessarily doing anything. I have 110 in the north and 75 in the south, so I think what I'm going to do is move them all together and then go ahead, uh, combine them, reduce the uh, maintenance, I should say. And I don't even know if I need this many ships. I could just disband these, but I don't know if I will. And so really all that's left to do is to basically convert more and more provinces back to the correct religion and uh, ultimately just you know keep improving our economy. Maybe we can get a better score. We ultimately have a score of 15,000, so that is a substantial number. Conversions are successful. Let's go ahead and get Skarsborg. A lot of provinces that need to be converted. Unfortunately, I don't know if we really have the, uh, the time to do those. Let's unlock the four field rotation, and we are now done with all of our technologies. So that is awesome. We're in the year 1819, and surprisingly enough, it has gone well. Now, did we ever get our alliance from Barat? No, we did not. Maybe we should try. And if I had to declare war, my next war would definitely be against Spain. <laughs> but uh, I have no idea if France would come and assist. They are allied with Austria and Ming, which makes me incredibly scared. I think what would happen is France would annihilate Spain for me. Uh, Barat would take care of the South. I would deal with Ming. And that would be how our war would go. So ultimately, Barat would get some nice trading provinces. I would probably take the island of Sicily and probably Malta and maybe some southern uh, provinces along uh, Italy. But ultimately, I would, you know, take a lot of these Asian provinces away from Chagatai and continue to grow that direction. I'm a little upset with all of these rebels. Let's just go ahead and improve the autonomy. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> so we're good to go there. 
And now I get that we lost a little bit of uh, taxation and production, but now we can make a lot more money not, you know, using our and all of our forces with full army maintenance. Did our fleet ever make it down? Yes, they did. We are now going to go ahead and mothball these ships, but just in case, there should be some sort of dock that gets local ship repair. So if we get Grand Shipyard inside, I don't know. What if we went to Constantinople, because that would look nicer. And we built ourselves a Grand Shipyard, if we can. And what we're going to do is instead of mothballing here, we will mothball inside Constantinople. And so then we could really build all of our ships back up fairly easily and fairly efficiently. Let's go ahead and mothball. And we now have another missionary that can start working on Marish. And yeah, this is where we stand. We are doing incredibly well. I would like to mothball our forts, but you know what? It's really not the safest thing to do when I have a country this large. I could go ahead and send down some units to basically uh, reposition themselves. I think I will. You're going to go there, and you are probably going to go to Yedishan. And I guess you can swing on down to here. Um, yep, <laughs> this is my empire. Let's go ahead, start working on another missionary and doll. And because I still have money, maybe I could build up a few more churches, get some additional taxation for ridiculously cheap. Uh, 91 ducats for 0.12 a month. So there went all of my money, still building a lot more every single month. We now have 195 treasury. And I think this game is going to end in either six months or a year in six months. Can we improve relations with any other countries? Maybe Tunisia. We are by far the most powerful country on the planet. And I guess the only other question I have, I, I do want to pause the game real quick. If I went into my trade map mode, uh, I'm ultimately getting five trade power for 100 ships. So I'm ultimately getting 500 trade power, and I have 229. So that means uh, I would probably get around 50% or 60% of all of the trade power in this region, which isn't amazing. It's not really as great as I thought it would be. Um, can these be improved? No, they both have stock exchanges. But I, if I continued to grow, my next expansion would probably be against Lubeck, because then imagine getting 21.2 ducats plus 58. Uh, we would really just grow and grow and grow. And don't get me wrong, the English Channel is pretty powerful too. But uh, we really need to start focusing on trade. And I don't know exactly what we would do. But it, oh, that, there we go. 3rd of January, 1821. We have a score of 15,367. And I do want to take this time to say we have the second largest army, second largest navy. I, I don't know if that's really accurate. <laughs> but uh, we obviously had the largest army because I could have created more. But highest, uh, the most provinces, highest income, second highest trade income. That's odd. Maybe Ming is ahead of us. But we obviously were orthodox. We had an Eastern technology, 118% religious unity. But uh, I'm also trying to think if there's anything else. Let's show up our timeline. So we obviously started in Muscovy, and I think we are going to do a fast timeline. So we obviously took care of a lot of these vassals, took a lot of these small territories. We grew and grew and grew. And I think in this entire campaign, we ultimately lost probably two or three wars. And, you know, they were against the Ottomans early on. And uh, there really wasn't much I could do about that. So obviously we are in the year 1497, growing and growing and growing. And uh, we did take over all of, I believe this was the, um, not the Teutonic Order, but the Livonian Order. You know, even in the year 1530, we have a lot of provinces, but I feel like this is where we began to stagnate. We uh, obviously had a little bit of trouble with Sweden. We had a little bit of... Caucasia is actually my vassal. We had a little bit of trouble with the Ottomans. We formed Russia. The Teutonic Order was getting pretty powerful as well. Uh, the Commonwealth was basically annihilated. And here is where the Ottomans start getting stronger and stronger. I think we went through an entire war just to gain Bessarabia. 
So ultimately, like this was getting uh, to be quite challenging. Persia's quite powerful as well. Sweden's still very annoying at this point. But we did win a war, and we made Finland into a vassal. Theodora was annexed. We still don't have the province of Azov. And it looks like Finland was annexed. So ultimately, at this point in the game, you would think we were doing very, very well. But this is where we start to lose provinces. Or actually, maybe we already lost provinces. But, uh, you know, I remember there was a point when the Ottomans took back a lot of my land... And therefore, I wasn't really... Yep, yeah, there, there it was. They took back so much territory. That literally would have taken me two wars just to get. But uh, where do we stand? Barat still taking more and more territory. Scandinavia being removed. Surprisingly enough, Stockholm. I don't know if that's accurate. I could have swore Stockholm was ours the, the entire time. I wonder if this is a glitch. Yeah, I obviously own Stockholm. That's a glitch. And at this point, the Teutonic Order is mine. We declared war on Bohemia just to take these bits and pieces. Our annexation of Hungary went well. Our annexation of the Teutonic Order went well as well. And then we invaded Scandinavia. Stockholm is actually mine. I don't know why this is a different color. You can see the Russian flag. But ultimately, that was our campaign. Had I had extended timeline, I probably would have made a very nice alliance with Barat. I probably would have kept my alliance with France. And I would have done everything in my power to basically declare war on Spain. And what I would have done is I would have returned a few provinces to Barat. Maybe not a lot. Uh, I obviously would give France a variety of provinces along the Genoa trade route. Which is obviously a lot of money here inside the Genoa trade 70, ooh, can't do that. Um, show timeline, can I go ahead and, uh, I gotta go on maximum speed. Well, if we scroll back out, this is the entire world. And you can see that the Indians are moving around. We haven't really seen any real colonial conquests, except from Portugal. And some from Spain. Muscovy is continuing to grow. And surprisingly enough, you would think Tunisia would spread to the south, but they never really did. Ethiopia becoming a very strong global power. Man, I still can't believe, like, look at all of this territory that we just lost. <laughs> all right, looking at Austria, New Holland is taking most of it. And so like I was trying to say, we have an alliance with France. We have an alliance with Barat. My number one priority would basically be to destroy the remaining forces of Spain and try to basically remove southern Italy from their grasp. And what I would then do is return some of Spain's territory, or basically grant some of Spain's territory to France and obviously do the same thing to Barat. Now, in the meantime, Ming would have been weakened away, but I guess we would have declared, really taken some provinces from Chagatai. But that would have been my plan. Had I have had extended timeline, I would have probably colonized all the way over to the other side of the ocean. And one of my biggest issues is I really wish I would have started building up. Like, the game doesn't allow us to really improve the infrastructure and a lot of the railways. Because obviously that's a different game. They want you to play Victoria. But uh, I just think Europa Universalis 4 is one of my favorite games. I'm glad I got to really uh, show off um, pretty much anything and everything. And I'm glad uh, you all enjoyed this as well. So thank you all for joining me. I hope you all have an awesome day. If you have any comments or suggestions or new countries I should play, please let me know. And I uh, will see you in our next adventure.